Morning. What's that noise? It's a... I feel there's going to be disturbance. A disturbance in the force. Um, morning. Morning. Bloody morning. Welcome, bloody welcome. Bloody. That's going to annoy me, that noise. It's going to annoy him. Somebody's doing something somewhere. It's Friday. Well, yeah, it's work day. Wow. So they're having work done. Granted, that is allowed. Yeah, and it's it's within hours of allowing work to be done as well. Well, it's disturbing me. Oh, well, now there's a plane <sighs> taking off. So, good morning. And first of all, I'd like to say a very, very happy Merry Christmas to our Russian viewers who are celebrating Christmas today. Are they? January the 7th. In the Orthodox Russian Church, right? Whatever it is, no, because they they follow the um, Julian calendar. Oh yes, they do, don't they? Rather than the, <laughs> the Gregorian, Gregorian calendar. calendar, and I think it's thirteen days behind. That's going to really bug me. That noise. Well, you just have to put up with it and hope <laughs> that they stop, I'm or trying. you go outside the front door. And you go, excuse me, would you please be quiet for an hour or so? Or you use your own choice words. <sniffs> look, listen, rather, not look. Let's get on with the show, Paul, and just ignore the noise. What are we getting on with? Sunday chat! <sighs> so, yes. Gregorian, Julian, just shows his load of all rubbish, doesn't it, really, at the end of the day? Well, it's just sort of, yeah. I seem to have a sort of halo on the a on halo. part of my head. Do you? Is that, is that a shadow? The light. Oh, it's a shadow. A shadow on your head? I've got a shadow here. I thought my hair had sort of come out to here, but right, shush I think now, it, Paul. why haven't you got a shadow? Because I'm naturally glowing with the beauty of Christ. <laughs> right. Okay, there we are. I'm glowing from within. Now we know. Now we know. <clears throat> Where are your disciples? Scattered far and wide. Well, there we are. There we are. Um yes, yeah, so good morning and welcome and welcome to our old subscribers who've been with us from the start. And what are they? The old wrinkly ones, rocking in a corner somewhere, waiting for Godo. No, waiting for us. Um, and our newer subscribers who've recently joined us, welcome. <laughs> welcome to the party. I feel as though every word I say today I have to think about. Well, actually, I mean, every word that we do say we do have to think about because yeah, there's some kind of the delay going on. going on in our heads. There's a delay to today, to, Paul. And then Why? it instructs the vocal Why? and the mouth to do that. Why? And then, whoa, we speak. But it usually happens in a split second. But today, I don't know. I feel a bit sluggish. Do you? Sluggish. You look a bit sluggish. No, I don't think I do. You do down no. here. What do you mean? It's sort of like all that Christmas fair. Yeah. Anyway, welcome. <laughs> and welcome to other followers on platforms such as Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and our Facebook group, Planet Vegetaria. That's a Facebook group by Rich and Paul. Rich and poor since 2017. That's contractual. So, and welcome. What? What? And coffee. Oh, of, of course. That yeah. goes without saying. Yeah. They get a special bonus video, Sunday Chat Extra. Sunday Chat Extra. I've just said that. I know, but I did it properly. You just skimmed over it. I did it properly. Yeah. And this week on Instagram... This week. This week on Instagram, we reached 10 million followers. 10 million followers we? on Instagram. So that's quite an achievement. Not I really. Think. No? No. 
1,100. Oh, that's what you were celebrating. It takes a long time on Instagram, not sure why, to get followers. Oh. Because it contains quality photos. <laughs> oh, I, I, you know what? Yesterday I was having a bit of a sort of dark moment throughout the day and I just, I thought about, and then I was looking at YouTube in the background and Moira popped up. And I looked at her, bebe. Bebe. <laughs> and it just made me laugh. It just made me laugh. Oh, yeah, we love the bebe. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's move on with the show. Paul, Paul, tell us, what has the weather been like recently? The weather has been very sunny and very cold. Very cold. Yesterday was a frosty day. Very... Carry on. Yesterday was, it was a, a very really frosty, frosty day, day. Very cold. It was so cold when we got in from our walk. Yeah, that miming is me. Yeah, I, I'm I taking it from you now. I'm reclaiming it. Because it was, that's, the thing me that started it. That's not fair. <laughs> but it's me who does it better. We went for our walk, and very quick. And when we got in, our cheeks were burning. Weren't they, Paul? It was like we'd had a super facial. Have I ever had a facial? No, and we can tell. <laughs> I mm -hmm. do have quite cragginess. Yeah, all right, get on with the show. Stop talking about yourself. It's all about you, isn't it, Paul? Yeah. Well, I think 2022 should all be about me. 2022, all about you. Yeah, that's right. Is that a new a new slogan of ours? 2022, it's all about you. And remember, if you want it all, watch Richard and Paul. <laughs> so I, I see you're focus, trying to, focus. to claim some back there when you're saying Richard and Paul. Paul, I'm doing this with love. <laughs> Let's focus. Because otherwise it just becomes a rambling mess. Doesn't it? A rambling mess. Yeah. So weather, cold, crisp. Bright, crisp and even. See, I can't do that. No, it's it genetic. It comes out as bright. It's crisp, crisp and even. Crisp. Just like good King Wenceslas. Crisp. When he was looking out on the Feast of Stephen. Bright. I used to find that confusing. Why? Because Stephen was never there to well, eat anything. Well, I thought, why is Stephen out in the snow having a feast? I didn't realise it was the day. It's Boxing Day, isn't it? The Feast of Stephen. Mm -hmm. 26th of December. So, yes, cold... Maybe it was also a reindeer. Crisp and even, bright and gorgeous, very cold. Not so cold today, bit breezy, little bit damp, I noticed, Paul. Did it rain last night? Yes. Good. So, moving swiftly on, it is now the new year. Happy New Year! 2022. This is actually our first recording of the new year, isn't it? Our, our, together. Because last time we did it on... Or did we do it on Saturday? We did it on New Year's Day. Oh, we did, we did. So it's not, so I'm completely wrong. Yeah. And some of you, some astute viewers, will have noticed that we had an audience that day. A live studio audience. We did. This isn't our home, it's actually a studio. <laughs> Um, we We'd did. better we had... get the lighting better if it's a studio. Oh. Anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. No, we had a guest that day, we? Didn't did. We did. We had yes. a guest that day. We had the lovely Vivi Gregory of What Vivi Did Next in Vivi's Kitchen Garden. We did. Joining us here in the studio. Over there. In our front room. Yeah. Anyway, so that was all lovely, lovely. Um, but yes, it, the, the new year has arrived. Back to work. Yeah. Back to, well, something that resembles work due to the cron. I mean, you know, there's hardly anybody there. Well, I mean, there's hardly anyone there anyway. But even with the people yeah. back there, you've had four people. Dropping like flies. Yeah. Basically, it's very contagious. That's why it's important to keep wearing your mask, washing your hands, and sanitising. 
and keeping your distance. Yeah. Hurrah! Hurrah for keeping your distance. Yeah. I hate getting too close to people. <laughs> I was going to say, Richard has been keeping his distance from people for years. I've been in train for this all my <laughs> you life. You have, haven't but you? But Paul, Paul, we've been snuggling up close and getting all cosy. We put an extra blanket on because it has been cold. Yeah, on the bed. Very cold. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and snuggling up of an evening with a snuggly blankie on our sofas, watching lots and lots of good television. So, and Paul, some not so good, yeah. we've also made a sort of unspoken commitment to walking a little bit more often mm -hmm. than we have of late. Yes. Haven't we? And we've done quite well so well, far. Yeah, we, we did particularly well <laughs> yesterday. Yesterday... Um, I mean, I don't carry my mobile phone with me wherever I go. But yeah. obviously, if we go out for a walk, I take the mobile phone with yes. me. And yesterday, it said that I had done 8,756 mm. steps. Oh, that's good. Which isn't steps. It's steps. So, um, if I'd done 8,576 steps or whatever. Yep. Yeah. Keep kettle burning. Um, so... Yeah, we're doing we're doing that. Yeah. So I think I most probably hit ten thousand yesterday. But I'm not aiming for ten thousand, I'm just aiming for more. And we're also looking at our portion sizes. Portion control. Yes. And we're cutting back on cheese as we well. Are. Because we, st we 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 were doing really well last year and then we slipped into a habit of eating more cheese than we normally would. So yeah. That was on Dragon's... There was a cheese thing on Dragon's Den last night, wasn't there? And um, what's her name? Uh, Deborah Meaden, who's plant-based. They had a plant-based cheese for her. They did. They? Um, but she didn't invest because of her moral stance, which I think is really good. I... Oh, yeah, we, we watched that. We Dragon's watched that. Den. Yeah. So, anyway, we've not got onto television yet. No, but I yes, we... we haven't put it down. Oh, We are trying to be good. So, trying to cut down on the Lindor. Well, you are. And the cheese. Just yeah. trying to be sensible again. I think if the, if the New Year does do anything, it just reminds you mm. that it's never too late to start a new habit. Or to try... Or to try and take control of things a little bit more. Because... I think the past couple of years has been quite difficult for everybody. What, Paul? I've got a hair. Ugh. I think it's been quite difficult for everybody because there's been this sort of, I think, attitude of, oh, sod it, I'm just going to eat it anyway. I don't care. Yeah, the world's I got know. The world's gone to pot. Who gives a damn? There, I'm sure a lot of people have thought like that. Because I think when people are sort of pushed to the limit, yeah, they turn to comfort. And, you know, we're no different than anybody else. We like our comfort food, but we're trying to rethink that. I made a lovely dish the other night, didn't you... I? That gorgeous corn in a white wine sauce. That was lovely, With yes. Hardly any fat in it. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit of cheese on top. I am... Mulling over an idea for this year in terms of cookery videos. I'm not going to announce it because I've not formulated it yet. But I'm trying to think of a way of maybe doing a series of videos that brings our sort of everyday home cooking. Not every day. Not every day. Not every day. Is that some kind of impression of me, Paul? Yeah. Because it sounded drunk. It fits. So I'm trying to sort of think of this and, and what I might call it and how I might do it because we do tend to throw meals together. And, you know, I, I enjoy going into the kitchen and thinking, what am I going to cook this evening? What shall I put together that's tasty, nutritious, filling, yet, yeah, you know, low in fat, healthy, all of that, fibre, blah, blah, blah. And so, and from what we have. And from what we've got in, mm. you know. Home cooking. I mean, you, we... Alexa, stop. 
Alexa, set an alarm for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, starting now. We don't do a meal plan for the week. No. I, I know there are those people who are very organised and they know exactly what they're going to have or they decide what they're going to have before they do their shopping. We sort of te tend to get the same things, you know, each week. So, yeah, it's a matter of not, oh, we're going to have X tonight. It's a matter of what shall we have tonight and what is in. Yeah. And I enjoy throwing something together when we kind of look in the fridge and go, we've got nothing. There's always something. And there might be a, you know, pepper lurking in the corner that's seen better days that can be fried up and added to a sauce and be absolutely lovely. Mm. So it's that kind of line that I'm thinking along. And, and then also, last night... And also, <clears throat> things that are relatively inexpensive. Yes, not frugal. I think it, it, it's not frugal, well, but I inexpensive. We, I think we eat fairly frugally. Well, um, <clears throat> you see, I, I, I think there's a different word, because frugal is, I think, buying as well as you can, but very cheaply. So, you know, we, buy, uh, we get four tins of baked beans for £1.10. We could get baked beans for 20p a tin. So we, but we don't do that, you know. Um, so I think, yes, we do eat relatively frugally, but we're, we're not working to a, a real tight budget like so many people are in this um, well, poverty-stricken country that we live in. Well, you know, we're fortunate. You mm. work, I work. Yeah. So we earn a wage. Um, most of that wage goes on, you know, paying for the house and the bills. Yeah. Uh, but we're not extravagant, I don't think, in our in our buying no. food I at all. Did I say we were extravagant? I no, I think we're, we're in the middle, aren't we, between yes. frugal and extravagant. Yes. Frugalivant. Frugalivant. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite a good word, actually. Is it? I think it is, yeah, because it means absolutely nothing. No. Yeah. It's one of those words that, like, all those coffee shops, they come up with their own sort of language. Yeah. So look out for a new season at some point of home cooking some called something something and something somehow. And I don't know what. It, it will happen on a day of the week as well, won't it? As most things do. I know, so I'm correct in what I say. Anyhow, Paul, let's move the show on now. Moving on. So, yeah. Walking, back to work, trying to do something. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get through the day. Do you see what I mean? My words aren't coming today. Oh, I don't know dear. why. I feel sort of a bit... I, I, feel, I think I'm a bit tired. I, I don't know why. I think... I mean, I sort of feel similar. I, I mean, you know, one, one enters the new year, even if you don't make ne uh, New Year's resolutions, you enter the new year thinking, you know, a bit new year, new you, and I've all of that. That's yeah, what happens. Uh, no. And actually, <laughs> getting to the end of this week, and I already feel sort of shattered. I think, for me as well, I think we've been, we have been waking up early again. And I'm not sure why. We'd been waking up. I woke up the other day about four o'clock in the morning and didn't get back to sleep till about six. Why is it? I don't know. It's not as though we're doing anything different. No, and then waking up at six o'clock. I mean, today we woke up around 6.30 and dozed I, till seven, I think. Well, yeah, but I woke up and it was very dark. Mm. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Maybe we need to turn the mattress or something. I don't know. Well, you know, I'm not something a little bit different. I'm not uncomfortable. Yeah, but you might subconsciously be uncomfortable. No. No, unconsciously be uncomfortable. No. I don't know. I think no. there's a lot going on in the world. And, I mean, I read a news, I read an article this morning, won't go into it, and it just made me thought, Paul, stop reading the news, pointless, because actually... Until the next time comes to vote, you can do nothing about it. Yeah, anyway, anyway, anywho. Anywho. So. <clears throat> <clears throat> Paul. Poil. Poil. Poil, poil, poil. <laughs> 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 
What have we been watching on television this week? It's been a bumper week again. Yeah. Well, so at New Year, we rewatched the first two Wurzel Gummidge, didn't we? Yeah, of th- two years. Well, yeah, two years ago. Yeah, we rewatched those with Vivi because we wanted Vivi to see them. Because and she he, hadn't seen them. And that, that's the ones written and directed and starring Mackenzie Crook. Yeah. Yeah, the new ones. Yeah. Yeah, but the ones that came out first, the first two episodes. Yes, that's what you said. Yeah. yeah. So that was good. And then they written and directed and starring Mackenzie Crook. That was good. Yeah. Also, be, actually, before we dive into the TV bit... I think they're lovely. And I know we said this... Li- last week but you know what re-watching them brought me back to the the start of the magic of Wurzel Gummidge because I I do rather get sort of quite sentimental and and quite emotional about certain things that happened and in that that first episode with the locking of the seasons there's just so much sort of beauty in a particular scene it's very nice. Lovely. But I just wanted to backtrack slightly right. because one of the things I watched on Christmas Day on YouTube, no, was it YouTube? No, <coughs> Facebook, was the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope. Oh, right, yes, yes. We both watched that. Yeah. You were watching it in the middle room. I was watching it in here on our, on both on our tablets. And you were actually 10 seconds ahead of me. Well, you know what I kept doing? I kept stopping it and refreshing it to make sure it was totally on the money. Well, thanks for giving me that tip. We've been following this because we're both interested in space. And I find it fascinating. I find the technology fascinating. I find... um, the ability to send something like that, this massive object, into space and successfully deploy it, I think Mm. there's something like 320 things that can go wrong. I would thought in... Yeah. Something like that. Individual components that need to deploy correctly in order for the whole thing to work, Mm. which I think is incredible. Yes, I know, before anybody starts on about the, the amount of money and all of that... I know it's a lot of money, but personally, I think it's worth it. Because we have to think of the future. We have to think of our understanding of the cosmos in the future. Because if we are to explore more and potentially get in touch with other civilizations in hundreds of years' time... What do you mean, potentially? Well, potentially, because that's what we'd love to do. Yeah, but there's bound to be other life... Out but they're so, the far, they're so far yeah, away. Exactly, exactly. We may never yeah. reach them. So that's why I say potentially. I think it, everything we can do to understand the cosmos and its age and how it formed, I think is beneficial. Because the technology also enables other things to move forward because mm-hmm. technology is shared, you know, and has application in different ways across other technologies that do other things in the world. So it's not just about space. Anything that advances us technologically can potentially be beneficial for the human race, you know, yeah. in some way, shape or form. Because there are things, that, that there are ways of doing things that they discover that they realise could be used in other ways. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I don't agree with space tourism at all. I think space tourism is a no-no. However... The advancement in science and space exploration that that Musk and Doodah have have brought in what they are doing, um, I think is is pretty amazing. Maybe less so Virgin um, Galactic, um, but yeah, it's 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 about it's about advancement of science, and as you say good things being shared. I think also it's natural. It's totally natural for humans to want to push forward with exploration Mm. and invention and all of that, you know. 
I think this is our, uh, it's our natural way forward. I, I think it's just what we are here to do. And also consider this. Can you hear that? What is that person doing? Do you have to do that? No. <laughs> I don't think saying that through blinds and the window is going to get you an answer. Think about this. The way I like to look at it is if we are the only life in the universe. Which we're not. Which we just can't be because it's so big. But if we are, we are the only way that the universe itself has in exploring itself. Unless, of course, the universe is an entity in itself. Yeah, but it's not. We don't know that. Well, I don't think it is. It's not, we are the only, we are the conscious part of the universe. We are the sentient part of the universe exploring itself. Yeah, we are likely we? to be a part rather than the That's what part. I'm saying, if we are the only, you know, know sentient beings in the universe. Mm. Interesting. Uh, so I think it's just the way it is. You know, so we're following the James Webb's progress. It's doing really well. It's currently flying out through space to Lagrange point two. two. Um, if you don't know what the Lagrange points are, I know a little bit about them. They are points in space around the Earth and the moon where a body can sit in orbit so it's all to do with gravity and how the gravity of the planets, the sun, the moon create these areas where a body can, I think, be in equilibrium, mm. you know? So it's a fixed orbit, isn't it? Well, it, I don't know whether it's fixed, fixed, well, it, but it's, it's, a... it's at a point in space where it orbits with everything else. Yeah. Yeah. So... It's flying out to this point where it will sit and do its observations and hopefully be able to look back in time because the further, the deeper you look into space, the further back in time you're going. Mm. Uh, I'm not going to start explaining that, but this is how well, it is. Well, I, I, think, I think it's quite easy to explain in some way. So if you see something that is really bright... Um, it's likely to be closer. If you see something that you can hardly see because it's dim, what? it may have the same brightness but be much, much further away. That is, that's basically it. There are different. There, you know, there are reasons why something might be brighter well, no, than something no, else. No, 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 no. Because it might no, be no, no, a no, no, massive, Paul, massive sun. That's not the way to explain it. The way to explain it is that light, light it. takes time to reach us. Yeah. Okay. So the sun's light, I think, takes eight minutes mm -hmm. to reach us. So if the sun disappeared now, we wouldn't know until eight minutes' time. Yeah? So there is a, a delay. So the light has travelled because light has a finite speed. 186,000 miles a second. So mm -hmm. the light from very distant objects has taken a long, long, long time to reach us. So the further out we look, the further back in time we are seeing. Yeah. And hopefully the James Webb telescope is going to be able to see the formation of stars and galaxies at the beginning of time. Because it's so far out. They are so far out. It. What? It, the James Webb telescope, well, will no, be it... so far out from us it will be shielded from certain things and be able to see further out well, no, than the no, Hubble no, no, telescope no, 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 does at no, the moment. No, Paul, again, not an adequate explanation. <laughs> the James Webb telescope operates in the infrared. Yeah. So in order for it to do that, it has to be very, very cold. So it has to be shielded from any warmth from the sun. That's do you operate why. in infrared? Yes, always. <laughs> I'm a glowing body. But it you're is, more it infrared is, than me. Yeah. Right? I mean, if I looked at you on an infrared camera, you'd be like the Big Bang itself. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. 
So let's move on now. But if you Ooh, want to science. watch, if you want to, Alexa, stop. But if you want to watch live, I mean, you're not watching it live. You're watching sort of graphics where the James Webb Telescope is within its journey and all the metrics and things you can um, go to YouTube, there are various channels, but if you go, I think it's NASA James Webb, isn't it? If you go to that one, you, you see the proper one. And it, it's extraordinary, because you see how fast it's traveling per second, what the temperature is this side, what the temperature is that side, how far they've gone, how far they've got to go. It's extraordinary, yeah. Lovely, so that's been an interesting view. Blah, blah, blah. Right, television, Paul, television. <laughs> what have we watched? We watched um, The, the great, Expanse. The Great Pottery Bore Down. We watched The Expanse, which we absolutely loved. Love it, um, as usual. You know, it's blah, just blah, blah. great. We then watched, well, we watched the first episode of The Great Pottery Throwdown, <sighs> which I felt I just didn't enjoy as much as previous ones. <sighs> Um, I no, felt no. that I don't like that new presenter well no but I mean some people will you know but you don't that's fine um, I'm looking forward to the other one coming back yeah it's got the broken leg um, but what I mean I could see why they couldn't delay it because of course people have been social distancing and all of that and they've been what self isolating and you know so you couldn't really change the timing of it but I feel that they're really they they want to get certain types. If you look at the the contestants this year, you can sort of match them to the similar contestant of last year. And I think that's a, a bit of a shame because it means that what they're doing is they're not reviewing the applications that come in in a way of looking at what is, who are the best and who may be the most interesting. They're looking at it in sort of, quality of TV, which really shows that it's an entertainment program. Um, I hope that we're going to get to to like them, um, but I can see it being quite formulaic. And the bit where Keith was going around taking things and throwing them in the bucket, I felt that was a bit... I felt that he was told, we really need to play that up this year. I think TV... I mean, you know how I feel about TV producers, I um, really, I think TV companies walk a line, don't they? They walk a line between giving the public what they want and the decision to make things fresh. Mm. And I think there are certain programmes now that uh, the Great British Bake Off, boring, so boring. Um, the Great Pottery Throwdown Throw down is also becoming boring as far as I'm concerned the sewing bee boring they I really want a shake up mm, mm. because that's that's who I am I like a shake up I like things to be different and fresh and new I think people should push their creativity a little bit further you know I have to say I have to say and some people might not like this but it's very similar with YouTube yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. Because there are... I, I had a, a go through my subscriptions recently. And I have to say, I ditched a lot of channels because they weren't making any new content. And what new content they were making was just really not very good. Um, and I thought, no, I haven't got time to watch all of these channels. Some of them haven't made content for two years. Well, they may have given up, obviously. Yeah, exactly. So, unsubscribe. I need fresh and new. Some of you may think Sunday chat is old hat. Sunday now. chat! Some of you may think it's old hat. And, and they would obviously be wrong. formulaic. Um, yeah, maybe it is. Maybe <laughs> yeah, exactly. We, maybe we need to freshen things up. Maybe we need to do a, a, you know, maybe once a month do one completely nude. Maybe that would shake things up. Yeah. Maybe that's something we could do. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, at least we're trying to bring some new content as well. Mm. You know? So, hey-ho, just what it is. 
But I think as a viewer of TV, I want fresh new. I want shake-ups. I want presenters who are worth their money. Really. And that new presenter's not. Shall I go? I think you'd be excellent, Paul. So... <laughs> A liar. We continue with Discovery, Star Trek Discovery on Pluto TV. Yes, and what did we also do this week with Discovery? We forced Vivi Gregory to watch one. And she sat here, here, in where my seat here. And watched Star and Trek. And she was sort of like... We like to give our friends firsts. And then she was... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then the break came and it was... Right... This question I need answering. This question I need answering. This question I... So I think she might be um, getting around her laptop and watching Pluto TV. We finished The Lost Symbol. We did. And you know what? I really enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, I did as well. I thought the performances were good. The story was good. Um... Yeah, it was good. It was good. And I think they're doing... Um, I think they're commissioning a second one because actually what I hadn't realised is that it's Lost Symbol is a prequel to the others. So that's why they're, you know, doing it in this order. But I thought the actors were really good and, yeah, I just enjoyed it. We started a new police drama, Ragdoll. Yeah, Which is OK. It's OK, but... but... The sound, the, I mean, it's just, I mean, whoever did that sound design and, you know... There's two things about the sound. There's the music, mm. the, the perennial issue of the music being too loud, and also the delivery of certain lines is so quick. Or quiet. Quick, blended with music, you miss what's being said. Yeah. It's a little bit like, I, I was always like that with the Harry Potter movies. Yeah, I know what you mean. They're like, you know, Harry, Hermione. She's so quick, you just can't. It's like, what did they say? What's happening? What are they doing? I mean, we are you know? often... I mean, even last night we were watching something. I'm, I'm not sure what it was. Um, I mean, maybe it was Ragdoll, I don't know. But I, I paused it and I said, what did they say? Yeah. And uh, we, you know, we skip back blah, 10 blah, seconds blah. and listen to it. <clears> and it's all, oh, that's what they said. We also started the police drama Clarice. Yes. Which is the continuing story of Clarice Starling mm. after Silence of the Lambs. And you were absolutely intrigued by it, weren't you? Well, so much so I fell asleep within five minutes. <laughs> so... If it doesn't capture me and it's the evening, I would just go to sleep straight yeah, away. Yeah. So, blah, blah, blah. Da, da, da. Countdown da, da, da. we've been watching. We've um, continued with a new series of Countdown yeah. 2022. Enjoying that. Always there's, there's enjoying a, it. There's a guy on it who's, who's uh, he's got a master's in physics and he works in IT, doesn't he? And... We, yeah, we like we like him. You feel that he's like a... a he's a contestant. A distant royal. A, a, a sort of past royal, don't you? He's got one of those faces that looks like a... How a... I don't know, European royal family face. Mm. I know sort of what King you mean. Henry face. So that's lovely. Fenella is back from the garage. Oh, yeah, but... And then th- something else, which oh, we haven't God, got here. Go. Um, don't look up. Don't look up. You haven't seen all of Don't Look Up unless you see the scene after the end titles. Yeah. OK, lovely. So That's great. for those people who don't know, there is a short scene of a minute or so after the end titles. Lovely. Do Great. watch. Thanks, it. Paul. Thanks well, for that important I'm, I piece thought a lot of people knew about it, and but I think a lot don't. So, so Fenella's back from the garage. Well, we, we took her to the garage to get her indicators sorted. They have now been fixed. Um, I'm going to be taking her to the other garage um, quite soon for some other little bits and pieces, I think, that need doing, like... I'd like the brakes to be looked at because they're a little bit strange, I find. A little bit bit grabby. 
don't you think? Have you got a penchant for mechanics at the moment? No. I'm going to this garage. I mean to that garage. No, I just feel I'd like the wheels to be looked at and the, I can the, look wheel, at the, wheels. the wheel alignments and the brakes. So I'm going to be taking it, her again for a little bit of extra work. For some so more TLC. Lovely. Have you given her a wash recently? No, because it's been too cold and wet. I think that's an excuse. Good. You've got thermals, haven't you? Doing we went more. out for a walk the other oh, day. You really? had your thermals and you How said that you were absolutely lovely and warm. Blah, blah, blah. So, say goodbye now, Paul. Say goodbye. Is that it? That's it. I'm going goodbye. to mention cheese straws. Say goodbye. He did cheese straws this week, I and there's a video, there is a video, and it's absolutely lovely. I'm going to be doing shortbread as well. Oh, so. Shortbread, uh, but that's going to be in July, because we're cutting down at the moment. No, I'm sort of. going to do a reduced size recipe, oh, just nice. to make a few biscuits. Are you going to put the rest in the freezer? No, I've got cheese straw dough in the freezer. I know, but could you do the same with your shortbread? No, I'm going to make enough to make, like sort of Six. nine biscuits. Right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Isn't there anything else we want to discuss? Thank you. Bloody thank you. I'm sure there's something else. No, that's it. Gone through the list. That's it. Is that... Full is stop. That Goodbye. We'll be back next week, though, won't we? Bye. We'll see you soon. Maybe Bye. Some, maybe some cookery. And gardening. Oh, he did like do that. another dish, didn't you? You did that one last night. That was lovely. Yeah. Which had peas and sweet corn and baked beans in it. Yeah. And, and that was absolutely lovely. And we it's had like it chili. with rice. It's like a chilli. But he did portion the rice very well. So, yeah. Is that to stop me talking? Is yeah. that what that's for? Say goodbye. Oh, right. Bye. 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 Come again. Hope you enjoyed it. I think they've all gone now. I'm going to say bananas to see if anyone's still there. Yeah. <laughs>